Hello folks and welcome back to another episode of Rank Em All, where we rank the full discography from different metal bands. And today we're going to take on Merciful Fate's discography. And Merciful Fate is a Danish heavy metal band that formed back in 1981 by vocalist King Diamond and guitarist Hank Sherman. Their lyrics dealt with Satan and the occult, and thus they inspired a whole generation of metal bands particularly the wave of black and thrash metal that followed. And Merciful Fate has released seven studio albums in total, and one is in the works right now, but we still don't know when that one will be released. So if you're a King Diamond or Merciful Fate fan, or just curious about what this band has to offer, then smash that like button and subscribe with the bell notifications turned on because now it's time to rank Merciful Fate's full discography. In 7th place we have Dead Again, and saying that this is the worst Merciful Fate album is almost a criminal act since a bad Merciful Fate album is still like a 4 out of 5 album in my opinion. And Dead Again came out in 1998 on Metal Blade Records. It was the band's 6th studio album, and what I like about Merciful Fate is that they didn't give a crap about trance, they stayed true to their craft, and they didn't try to sound like Pantera like so many other metal bands did in the 90s. And Dead Again was the first Merciful Fate album that didn't feature the guitar duo of Hank Sherman and Michael Denner. Instead, Michael Denner was replaced by Hexenhouse guitarist Mike Weed. I have a hard time to pinpoint why I think that this is my least favorite Merciful Fate record. Maybe it's because of the songs on this album don't fully connect with me, despite the musicianship being great and the production being on point and everything. But I do like the song The Night, which is my favorite track on this album. And I also like Banshee and Torture. So even if I rank this as Merciful Fate's worst album, I still think it's an album that you most definitely should check out. Next. In 6th place we have 9 from 1999, and this is the band's latest album, even if it's some 20 plus years old now. And it was around this time that I started to take notice of the band. I've heard some earlier tracks from the band, but I found King Diamond's voice to be a bit too extreme for me at the time. But the track Last Rites was included on some sort of compilation album that I listened to back then. And I found their music to be very infectious, even if I wasn't completely sold on the band just yet. But the song grew on me until one day I decided to give the band my full attention, and Merciful Fate was like a revelation to me. My first impressions of the band had led me to believe that they were just another band in the crowd, and that King Diamond's vocals were ear-piercingly high for the purpose of being extreme. I certainly didn't see the full picture because Merciful Fate were just on another level in comparison to most of the other stuff that I was listening to back then. Anyhow, I find 9 to be a more powerful record than Dead Again. It just packs a little more punch, and there's just more great riffs and great songs on this album. I like Last Rites, Church of Saint Anne and Buried Alive. And 9 is a nod to the band's past, which you can see on the artwork. But this album is also more satanic and occult than some of the more recent efforts, which I do like. The more horror based concept stuff, they can save that for King Diamond instead. I mean, I do love that stuff too, but it's nice when the bands don't sound the same. And will the band ever write a new Melissa or a new Don't Break the Oath? Probably not, but... If they ever put out an album as great as 9 again, then I would be extremely excited. So, next. In 5th place we have Into the Unknown, and this was the band's 5th studio album when it came out in 1996. And this one is just packed with great riffs from Michael Denner and Hank Sherman. The best guitar duo in metal, next to Tipton and Downing of Judas Priest. And these guys just churn out more great riffs in 2 minutes than most other bands does throughout their whole careers. Just listen to the song 15 Men and a Bottle of Rum. It blends these type of melodic riffs with some rather straightforward stuff. And it might be a bit weird that Merciful Fate were doing a pirate song, but trust me, Running Wild would have been proud of that one. 
The Uninvited Guest is also one of the better songs from this album, even if it sounds more like an eerie King Diamond song than a Merciful Fate track. And Into the Unknown is a great album and possibly on my top 10 list of the best metal albums of the 90s. Next. In fourth place we have Time from 1994, and just like 10 years earlier, Merciful Fate released two studio albums back to back. In the Shadows in 1993 and Time in 1994. If In the Shadows was closer to the classic period, Time was a bit more experimental. It's overall a bit more accessible, and that can be a swear word in metal, but the Time is not a weak album, quite the opposite. I think it's a masterpiece, but it's rarely recognized as one. It's definitely one of the best albums of the decade. There's just not a bad song on this album. Angel of Light, Witches Dance, Time, and let's not forget about Nightmare Be Thy Name. It's also a great track that would please a lot of their old fans, I think. It really don't get much better than this. So, next. In third place we have their comeback album In The Shadows from 1993. And the only reason why this album ain't talked about as a masterpiece, it's because of its release date. It came out in 93, and this type of metal wasn't exactly what most people were listening to at the time. But they really should have, because it's a remarkable album. Merciful Fate toned down the Satanism a bit on this album, and instead they focused more on horror themes, kinda like King Diamond's solo band. And uh, my only criticism here is that they kind of copied what worked on their previous two full lengths. Is that You Melissa is of course a nod to Melissa and Egypt is a nod to Curse of the Pharaohs. But I don't have a problem with that. Just listen to the intro of Egypt. There are some real tasty riffs there. And I think that In The Shadows was the best comeback album ever made. So next. In second place we have Don't Break the Oath from 1984, and this album is just pure perfection, and one of the major reasons why I care about metal. It's easily one of the top 10 best albums ever created. It was so different from all the other metal at the time. Venom were perhaps the closest thing with their embryonic black metal, but King Diamond's vocals were so much more dynamic. And if Venom was criticized for being bad musicians, Merciful Fate was praised for their incredible musicianship. And there are some progressive elements on this album. And Don't Break the Oath was also very influential to all future black metal bands. Just listen to the lyrics to the song The Oath, it still gives me the chills. It's far creepier than all of those King Diamond horror songs. And the production of this album is a bit colder than Melissa, but I think that the songwriting here might be slightly better actually. And they also managed to keep up the quality throughout the whole record. Every single song on this album is just pure perfection. So if you're watching this video and you for some reason haven't listened that much to this album, I mean, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> Maybe you haven't really given the album a chance because you think that King Diamond's vocals are too high pitched and squeaky. I mean get over it and listen to Don't Break The Oath Now, because it might very well be the greatest achievement in music. At least since Bob Dylan plugged in that guitar. <laughs> and the greatest Merciful Fate album of all time is in my opinion Melissa from 1983. And this is one of my favorite metal albums of all time together with Don't Break the Oath. And I remember that I traded this album with a friend of mine. For some reason he was willing to let go of this album. And I don't remember what album I gave him in return but it's a wonder that he even speaks with me these days since I completely robbed him of one of the true masterpieces of metal. <laughs> I wasn't aware how good this album was when I did the trade. But it certainly was like winning the lottery. It was one of those albums that when you hear it you know that it will be one of those albums that will stay with you forever. And it certainly has so far. The production of Melissa has a roundness to it that Don't Break the Oath lacks to some degree. Maybe the songwriting here wasn't as developed as on that album but both Melissa and Don't Break the Oath are complete masterpieces. 
Evil has some of the greatest riffs ever written. And the same can be said about the next song on the album, Curse of the Pharaohs. Two of the greatest metal songs of all time, just back to back like it's nothing. And then we have Into the Coven, Black Funeral, Satan's Fall and Melissa. And they are all exceptional songs. King Diamond, Hank Sherman, Michael Denner, Timmy Grubber and Kim Russ. Remember those names forever, because they are gods amongst men. So, let's have a look at my full list now. And here we have it in all its pride and glory. And uh, I also urge you guys to listen to their 1982 self-titled EP, also known as the Nuns Have No Fun EP. It's as good as Melissa and Don't Break the Oath. The Return of the Vampire compilation album is also an absolute must since it includes a lot of demo songs that the band wrote during their early years. Merciful Fate probably has the best discography in metal. I mean, the highest average standard by any band that released more than two or three albums. I haven't listened to every band out there, but I'm pretty sure that I'll never find a band that just kept releasing masterpiece after masterpiece after masterpiece, even into the 90s when everyone else tried to be Pantera. And, as you might have guessed by now, I'm a huge fan of this band. Maybe it's even the greatest band to ever do it in my opinion. And if you agree, then why not smash that like button and subscribe with the bell notifications turned on. And if you want to support my channel, then I'll suggest that you become a Patreon, so you'll get your name in one of my videos like these fine gentlemen. Or go and grab yourself a shirt at the Ruthless Metal Store. It's very much appreciated when you guys ship in. And I also have a Merciful Fate slash King Diamond playlist on Spotify if you want to listen more to these albums. And you're welcome to join my Discord community, that's where all the action is. And I let you guys vote on certain things now and then there, so check it out. And you can find all the links listed down below. And let me know whose discography I should do in the next Rank em All video. And uh, that's it folks. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.